This is the Video Game Podcast, episode 671 for August 31st, 2020. Go Milkshake Go. It's a slushy like drink. Go Milkshake, go Milkshake, go. Go Milkshake, go Milkshake, go. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me, as always, is Moon Pier. Hello, Governor. And the Nimp. Hello. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones or numbers get all the cool behind-the-scenes, early access, and exclusive uncensored episodes every week. Uh, you get all that good stuff. You help me pay for the show. And if you get the $250 uh, total level, I start playing some scary games. On stream, on stream, yeah, on stream, live in the dark with headphones on. Like I'll, I'll do it right. Like I'm not gonna be like, it's noon, the windows are open. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm listening to the sound. Like no, it would, I, I would do it proper. I'm not I gonna for you to do that. To be honest, yeah, yeah. Uh, Moon Pier, what have you been playing this past week? Okay, so we'll start with Lapex. Uh, that's Apex Legends, by the way. Um, anytime, anytime I send a message to um, um, who I've been playing it with, I just write L apostrophe Apex question mark. <laughs> Adding a little bit of class into it, you know, because Apex yeah. sounds like a French word, so you might as well put the La- uh, Lipex. You want to play some Lipex? I have a Lipex Engines installed. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, Apologize to continues. our French fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, French people. Um, it, it, the season six continues. It's a pretty solid season so far. Like it's, I can't tell if that motorbike was outside my house or somebody else's. Um, it's a pretty good season so far. Like there's, I like the changes that they've made. Ranked is not treating me well, which is to say, I'll have four rounds of drop and die, and then one round of you know, I'm doing okay kind of thing. Like top twenty. Dude, there's only 20 squads. I do that every time. Hey, man, match. you're yeah, you're in top 20 every time. See, it's all about marketing. It's like, I'm top 20 every time. How would I know? <laughs> That's true, because you never play the game. That's right. It's like Fall uh, Guys, top 60 every time. Killing yeah, it. 100%. <laughs> Call of Duty, top 100 every time. That's um, right. That's right. I never played the Call of Duty Battle Royale, so I don't even know if that's right. Yeah, it is. Um, it's all right. Awesome. Um... I I don't know. Like I'm enjoying playing the game, but there's been more frustration than success recently, and I don't know if that's just because everyone's jumping in because it's in a new season and everyone's discovering the new meta game and I don't pay attention to the meta game, so I don't know which is the most powerful weapon, but it would explain why I keep getting domed by like the same weapon over and over and over and over and over again. Mm. But I don't care. I'm there to pl- to play to have fun and to apparently really annoy everybody with Rampart because people just don't like her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. His skills are pretty fun. They're pretty solid. Uh, the main thing that seems to bother people is her attitude. Like... Oh. She... I think I mentioned it. She's British Indian, it sounds like, but she has a very British sense of humor. The difference is, is when I deliver my British sense of humor, it's in a very deadpan way. So you can almost always tell I'm joking, or mm-hmm. you just think I'm talking like I normally talk. You know, in a deadpan way with zero emotion like the robot that I am. Um, <laughs> but when she delivers these lines, she is bubbly, no pun intended, because she does chew bubblegum a lot, but she's bubbly, very active, and... <laughs> One of her drop lines is something along, along the lines of... Um, Okay, I'm the jump master. Um, let's get down there quick so we can show those fools why their mama never loved them. <laughs> Great. She's just a little bit on the mean side. Right, on... but like delivering it really positively. Yeah, and everything that she says is just a little bit on the mean side, which is ironic because Emma's favorite character is Watson, who is a positive person or was until the most recent story stuff happened. Mm-hmm. 
So Watson is always making cheerful comments and making bad puns about electricity. Boston, if you play Apex, you need to unlock Watson. She's your jam. Okay. Uh, everything she says is a pun about electricity. Everything. I love it. I am charged and ready to go. Yep. Uh, that's an extended energy magazine. Oh, you mean like a capacitor? It's <laughs> literally everything she says is a really bad point about electricity. Loving it. Um, but she's really positive. And that's who M plays. And M loves Caustic, who's the science guy, who's all about testing on people and murdering folks. But she doesn't seem right. to mind that. She just hates the way that Rampart says stuff. Mm. Which I'm only assuming is because she's very bubbly when she does. Caustic right. is very much a case of mm, willing test subjects. <laughs> right. Speaking of Mark Hamill. <laughs> yes, speaking of Mark Hamill. Well, I mean, Apex Legends it continues to be fun. It continues to be enjoyable. Ish. Sure. You'll add on to the end of that because there, there's been a couple of days where it's like, oh, I, I played 10 games and seven of those 10... I died without doing any damage at all. Yeah. Which, it's fine, but when you walk halfway across the map and you still don't do any damage, <laughs> that's when it gets annoying. <laughs> right. Uh, I did download and play Double Kick Heroes, which just came to Game Pass. Okay. Uh, which is a... Well, let's see if I can get this correct. I'm just going to break it down to its basics. It's a rhythm game. Okay where you're driving a car, shooting guns out the back of the car at zombies who are chasing you. Dope. It might get better for you. <laughs> okay. It's a metal rhythm game. Uh-huh. It's just getting better. I'm talking real metal. You're going to tell me it's a roguelike now, Park too? Metal. It might have roguelike elements to it, because everything does, does these days. That's right. Uh, but yes, Double double Kick Heroes. Guess what, folks? It's on Game Pass! So yeah. you can go and Give it a shot right now if you'd like. It's also on PC um, and it's Switch. It's <laughs> developed and published by Headbang Club. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. That's real good. It leans into the metal quite a lot. Um, I'm it's watching the trailer. It calls itself a rhythm metal rhythm metal shooter. Mm -hmm. Because you're every time you hit the beat, you are shooting the guns. And shooting the guns stops the zombies from catching the car, which means you can stay alive longer. It's a very interesting concept, and the music is really insane. Like, it goes from, like, 8-bit metal to, like, really hardcore metal. The intro is, like, a thrash metal, like, intro. It's a, it's a solid enough game. I played three levels, and I think I'm done. <laughs> okay, like you've seen everything you need to see? Mostly, at the moment, I don't think I can handle it. Like, oh, Okay. I'm, my brain is so physically tired right now, or mentally tired, I should say. Physic, no, whatever. Like, at that's the best how tired of times, your brain I, is. <laughs> yes. At the best of times, I feel like I'm observing the world through a, a small layer of Vaseline wiped over my brain functions. Mm -hmm. And I played a bit of this, and I was just like, "This is really cool." My brain is not compromised, compre comprehending, comprehending. <laughs> how to press two different bumpers right now. Like, that's... Yeah. It goes fast. And I, I was just constantly being like, I'm just going to hit this bumper three times and then this bumper once to make these three notes disappear. And mm. then I would constantly wonder why me hitting the button four times counted as a miss for three notes. Oh, and then right. a half a beat later, I'd be like, well, why did I press it four times? And then there's another five beat coming along, and I'm just like, nope, nope, I can't process this. <laughs> I, I'm not functioning correctly for this right now. So I'm going to have to give that a shot and and see. I Honestly, I would look forward to it. The whole reason I'm talking about it is because I want other people to play it, because I know yeah. I'm not going to give this game a fair shake right now. I'm just not. Right. I, when mentally I can't play the game... And I can see some of the things that is making me want to play it. It's like, I, I'll talk about it. I'll mention these issues, but I'm not going to say do or do not play. Yeah, it's also on uh, Game Pass for PC, too. So that's probably where oh, I'll try awesome. it. It works out pretty well for you, then, because I know yeah. you hate your Xbox. It's not that I hate my Xbox. It's just that both my PS4 and my Xbox are sick 
in different ways. And like, I'm mm-hmm. just waiting for the new models to come out. So these ones can like live on a nice farm upstate somewhere. No, it's when you cut yourself, you bleed blue, like a Vulcan. <laughs> no, because I play, I play stuff on pretty much everything. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. My, sure. my, my day one launch Xbox one vanilla. It's, it's just, it's old and tired. It just, it wants yeah. to go to sleep. <laughs> so what you're saying is just like pets, the consoles start to take after their owners. That's right. Very, very much so. And if you, you want to talk about bleeding blue, I can't even tell you the last time I touched my Xbox. And yeah. it's not oh, even I'm... like a conscience, a conscious choice that I made. I just all of a sudden realized one day that oh, I'm playing my PS4 a lot more than my Xbox. When's the last time I turned oh, this yeah. thing on? Trust me, I know. That is part of your personality that I accept. <laughs> well, I don't like part it. of part of it is is like uh, we'll talk about Spiritfarer in a little bit, but like I would be playing that on my Xbox if I didn't have Moonlight the launch. So like I, I can play all of these games with controller support on my PC, which is going to run faster at a better frame rate because like I don't even have I can't even do 4K on my xbox like it doesn't even have hdr so like there's there's no real reason i'll I'll play it on my pc and i can use the same controller and kind of have a better experience so well, it's, yeah like i stick with my ps4 just for the jrpgs which you normally can't find anywhere else but it was right. even to the point where earlier this week i bought a game on steam but before i did that i checked the price on psn <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm like what what does it matter? It, it right. It was cheaper on Steam anyway, but I was like, yeah. Whatever. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll I'll um, check that out. That's called Double Kick Heroes. I'm gonna check that out. Yes, and it's got cool. a cool little art style. It seems very rote nowadays the art style, but I still kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, Plague Tale Innocence. Oh yeah. Not so innocent anymore, the amount of guards I've murdered with rats. I was going to say, I thought you were trying to be in a happy place. <laughs> I am trying to be in a happy place, but I also need to clear some hard drive space, because shock of shocks, I'm back to being full again. Oh, and Plague Tale is 42.9 gig of single-player goodness that I can That's finish rats, and get man. uninstalled. Yeah. Like, I need it out. I need it done. Like, I was torn between that and Senua's Sacrifice. Mm. So new sacrifice is like 11 gigs it's oh, like wow. no i'm gonna do play tail first and then try and find a <laughs> sort by size season. yeah yeah i'm not kidding anytime i go into my games and apps it's literally what i'm sorted by yep so the biggest games get full features up at the front i really need to beat red dead redemption 2 so i can uninstall 120 gigs worth of space <laughs> oh boy Ugh. But I know where that story goes too, and that's not exactly happy go lucky either. Yeah, it's Neither true. Are any of the other games you named off, so. <laughs> right? No, yeah, nothing, nothing is these days, to be honest. Might as well but, just mm. do some hunting and then just knock out the story real quick. You're probably like two missions away from the end anyway. <laughs> no, I'm not that, that. No, I barely scratched the surface of that game. Um, but no, Plague Tale uh, continues to be a well told story. I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when I first talked about it. It took us by surprise because it's made well and functions. <laughs> right. And nobody had heard about it. And it continues to be made well and function. Nice. Um, so I don't think so far it deserves the praise it got. Okay. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it literally came up and like like an, a tidal wave overtook everything to do with gaming for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. Like everyone was talking about, I was like, okay, I don't know if it deserves that level of things when I don't know. Enter the Gungeon gets ignored for a year and a half. Uh, yeah, don't remind me. Grumble, you know, grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> yes. Yeah. By the way, I did love um, Edmund's tweet uh, about the <laughs> who's that Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, who's that Pokemon? It's clearly Isaac and Edmund. If you don't know, designed and created Isaac, and he's like, "Enter the Gungeon." It's like, "Yep, yes, that's Edmund." <laughs> Throw, throwing some shade that way. That's great. But I mean, it's good. It's acted well. It looks beautiful. The lighting in it is fantastic. The story oh, yeah. is interesting right now. Um, I'm dealing with alchemists during revolutionary slash maybe not revolutionary French like. Um, What's that thing that the British did where they wiped out half of the planet's population? Crusades. There we go. <laughs> ah, that I, thing. <laughs> I, I got there eventually. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's during it's in France during that time period. So there's ah. a lot of bad British people. Right. 
shock of shocks, the British are the bad guys. As we deserve to be. <laughs> are we the baddies? <laughs> yes. A thousand percent. Yep. Yes, we are. All British are bad. Yeah. <laughs> a A B A B. All British are bad. There you go. Uh, Americans aren't that great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, trust me, the, the acronym for that is A A A W. All Americans are worse. So <laughs> there you go. we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Uh, but no, Playtale continues to be fun. It plays well. I'm enjoying it, but I'm doing it in very, very small chunks. Like, I'll play an hour. I'll do one chapter tonight, right. and in two days' time, I'll do another chapter because it has really long loading screens, which gives me the perfect time to shut the game off and then not play it for another couple of days. There you go. Uh, uh, my final game this week, the game everybody's talking about and by everybody i mean everybody i talk to and everybody i interact with on a regular basis except for my wife nymp tell me what you think about it you know what i'm talking about you start first since you started recently okay so we're gonna be talking about spirit fair yeah mm-hmm. totally wanted to say a different game name but anyway <laughs> <laughs> doom eternal <laughs> yeah. um so yes i picked this up last week on the PlayStation, because mm. apparently I bleed blue, as discussed earlier. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really, really enjoy this game. Yeah. Um, it is, like you guys said last time, it does start really slow. Yeah. Um, I am at the point now where I have Alice, who is the newest person on my ship. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can double jump and I can glide now. Nice. Okay. And that's about it. My ship is right now, I don't know if this gets any bigger once you max it out, but I'm like the second one away from being maxed out on my ship right now. Okay. So I went mm -hmm. all into crafting and resource management and all that fun stuff to just build everything. That's so addictive. Yeah. Like once the once you can get to a new area, it's like, oh, look at all these new materials that I have to build. Oh, yeah, build this other stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. And my biggest <laughs> issue right now is I am stuck with the barriers that they put in the game. I found yep. Yep. a rock, an ice, and a fog, I believe. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rock, ice, and fog. Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. so it's looking like I, I have to wait until like a story moment before I can get the rock breaker. Which looks to yeah, be so one that you can get. I was going to say, do we want to break this down for them? Or? Yeah, so for anyone playing this game, it's like the only thing they don't mm -hmm. explain is you need a spirit flower. You yeah. get one of those every time you say goodbye to a passenger. Okay. So, like, everything else you can sort of figure out, and it sort of leads you in the right direction. But for the longest time, I'm like, what? The, what's a spirit flower? Like, what is this? You say goodbye to someone in their house, a uh, spirit flower spawns, and then you'll get one okay. for every person you say goodbye I, to. I figured it, it was probably tied to when you get a new spirit on your ship, because every time yeah. someone new comes on, all of a sudden something it doesn't open up but something that you couldn't do before that you've gone into before you can do something there now like one of those events and games and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so like with uh the light the thunderstorms used to just be i would yep. go through there until you know and all my plants would be watered and i'd be fine but as soon as i got the frog whose name i can't remember a tool a tool yes yeah. you could start catching Which lightning in a bottle in that area now yep mm -hmm. which is awesome and then once i got alice there's like this I don't know. The like, pill bugs? Yeah, the pill bug that shows up. Yeah. And I can get like the nebula fiber or whatever yep. it's called. So, yep. mm -hmm. which I haven't had a need for those yet, but every time that I've pulled into that area, I've been doing all those because I know I'm yep. going to need a ton of those eventually. Scoop them all so, up. Um, yeah. yep. Also, this is a small piece of advice. The game does tell you this um, at the first time afterwards it happens, but the events curated by specific people, once you say goodbye to those specific people, you can still do the events by just interacting with their door when you get to that location. Yeah, from their so little So it doesn't house. cut you off from getting those resources. I figured yeah. that would probably be what's happened, but yeah, eh, whatever. I'd figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I really like it. The fast travel, I also really enjoy. And the fact that it is actually fast. I'm not waiting for a load screen. It's basically, you know... <laughs> what did you think about Alex's introduction where he says he demands you call him Alex, not Alexander, because that's a garbage name for garbage people? Mm -hmm. As a person whose name is Alexander, that is a right. bull face lie. <laughs> right. How dare who this calls seal? Himself and Alex is a douche. <laughs> <laughs> laying, laying down battle lines here. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, Moon, I really have you. Like the uh, art style for it, too. It looks really beautiful. Yeah. Yes. It's so good looking. Moon, did you finish uh -huh. it this week? 
Nope. Okay. Um, I I played a lot of Apex this week, guys. I, there's a battle pass going on. I don't know if you know this or not, but I got <laughs> like a level 110 to hit. Um, no, I to still get <laughs> 80. <laughs> um, I have bid farewell to two, three more things. Okay. And uh, last time I played it, I actually just upgraded to get the Rock Breaker. Oh, um, nice. So now that whole side of the thing has opened up to me. Um, Mobility-wise, I'm two upgrades past where you are, Nim. Okay. So I have two more platforming abilities. You almost have the last one then, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> minor thing here. Sure. I love this game. I love the story. I love the writing. <clears throat> I love the, the telling. Am I a cold, dead robot as I previously proclaimed myself to be? Because I think I might be. <laughs> Why is that? Because so far, when I do the farewell stuff with right. the stuff, it's like I'm. <laughs> Stop me if I sound like a sociopath here. <laughs> okay, I will do. Yes. <laughs> Um, if you've read Holmes, this is a very much a what would um, what's his face do kind of moment, where every time I say goodbye to someone, I'm like, "Oh, cool, that's sad." Yeah, not feeling sad, thinking that is sad. Well, uh... thinking that is <clears throat> depressing, thinking that is X, Y, and Z. Well, where... I go ahead. Sorry, I, I I don't know if it's the fact that I'm I have in. in encased my shelf my shelf encased myself in a shelf of steel um <laughs> in like a wall of steel because it's 2020 sure and as much as this does have a it has a lot of goodness in it i really like a lot of stuff giovanni can go eat a brick giovanni for all sucks. i'm concerned about Stir, grumble, like, grumble grumble <laughs> there's a lot of stuff i'm really genuinely enjoying about this game and it's really, really great. Like, it's a yeah. really great game. But every single time I say goodbye to people, my brain says that's sad. Right. But my emotions say, this is a pixelated person. Get off my ship. Give me my reward. Like I, I think the thing for me is, uh, I, I think the game does a really great job because the goodbye process is fairly emotional. Because, like... Everybody mm -hmm. lines up on the deck of the ship to say goodbye, and, like, it's this very long, lengthy thing with great music and, like, a big crescendo, and, like, I won't Especially spoil it for anybody, Alice. but, like... Like, it, Alice is the worst one so far. Oh, God. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that that was... That was the <laughs> roughest of them, because, the like, the... I, I don't want to spoil it, but hers was, hers mm -hmm. was the roughest. Um, but I think, for me, I, I feel similarly but i think because the goodbye process is basically the entire time you know someone because mm -hmm. they're always gonna go to the ever door once they come onto the ship so like you already know what the end is gonna be and to me it's always kind of bittersweet because it's not like it's not like they left for no reason like they came to terms with something or they they finally made peace with someone else or you know like they their their full story came to like a satisfying conclusion and yeah it's sad but like you kind of made them happy and you kind of finished their their storyline wrapped up in in a largely satisfying way and i think to me it's like yeah that's sad but it's also kind of like it there's this it's half sad and half hopeful you know, mm. yeah. My problem is I'm just not feeling right now. <laughs> well, it is 2020, so you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I genuinely like, like I said, I'm processing it mentally and knowing that this stuff is sad, and I know yeah. for well maybe if I was in a more vulnerable state rather than trying to shield myself against the world in this year of 2020. Sure. And everything that seems to be going on in everybody's personal lives right now, if I was in a more neutral state rather than a more defensive state. Sure. Maybe this would be literally me curled up in a ball and sobbing in, in tears. Every two hours, kind of you're thing. like, I don't want to say goodbye. Yeah. 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 And I can see why it would do that. I can genuinely see why it would. Sure. 
I think at the moment I've just got too many balls up in the air to be thinking about this one ball over here trying to make me cry all the time. Right. I've got YouTube clips for that. Right, right. Uh, I finished it uh, this week. I was um, a lot closer to the end than I thought I was because I had basically like four people on my ship and one of them doesn't go to the Everdor. Um, they just stay on your ship permanently. Um and like one person went by very quickly because um, they don't they don't want to be on the ship. Um, and then I was like right at the end for the rest of the the people on the ship. So like I kind of said goodbye to all of them, did a couple of upgrades. I didn't 100 percent the game because I'm probably going to play this again on something else. Um, and like I'll probably try and play it on PS4 and and try and get the platinum because I'd like to do 100 percent of it. Um but I have to get through so many other games this year. Um, and then I like the game was very much like, go do this final thing. And thankfully it warns you before you go do it to say like, Hey, this is the the point of no return. You can load your game afterwards and keep going. But like, this is the final story point. And I was like, you know what? I'm happy with my experience in Spirit Fair at this point. I can go do all this other stuff. I can go catch all these fish and I can go do all this stuff. But I'm kind of ready to say goodbye. Like, I'm kind of ready to wrap this up. And the final goodbye. Uh, yeah, like uh, that is maybe sort of the 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 thing that I think that's what the final quest is actually called. Um, but the one thing I was worried about this, with this game was... Um, I was really worried that everything had been so good in this game. I was worried that they wouldn't stick the landing and I'm really mm -hmm. happy with how the ending went. Um, I, I, I don't think it was perfect, but I think it was, it was perfect for me. It was like a really nice capstone on this entire experience. Um, and I think, I think it was the logical conclusion of minor spoiler for the nymph here is the logical conclusion of where the hades story bits were going um which by the way hades is the best animated thing in this game uh bar none um and i think it was the the best logical conclusion i think it was it was incredibly i think it was a really satisfying ending um cool. so yeah i i i i'm really happy with it and i i I really recommend everybody try it and just like take the mm -hmm. ride for the first hour or two where the game is like slowly showing you stuff and you're sort of slowly wandering around the world and kind of learning it and figuring it out and just kind of give it some time. Have you guys played this in co-op yet? Nope. No, I talked to my wife about it and she didn't seem super interested in it, so I didn't really... I didn't really push it. So I did with mm. my daughter. Um, Your daughter is playing as Daffodil. Yeah. Yep. No, mm -hmm. I am playing as Daffodil. We uh, actually okay. started. Wait, on... hold on. No, 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 no. You're breaking rule number one, two, no, and no. three of parenthood. You are player one. They are player two. Hashtag deal with it. <laughs> We're playing on her account. Ah, uh, so, I see. And I wanted to play as the cat. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the... In a, in the co-op, obviously you have Stella, Daffodil, Human, Cat. Mm -hmm. The cat can do everything that Stella can do. So mm -hmm. I can, and since I've already, I'm way further than she is, I already know what we can do to get things going. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm telling her, okay, we need to go to this island. And then as the cat, I'm running to the boat, jumping into the boat, getting the boat to go to the island while she's still trying to catch up. And then I'm running to the trees, chopping them down. You have to wait for the other player to get there so you can actually do the saw thing, which is wait. still the funniest thing ever. My wife or my uh, daughter thinks that's the cutest thing that the cat hangs off on the end of the saw. And it's just Stella pushing it back Mo and forth with the cat dangling. Moon, have you had the cat get stuck and can't come with you to help you chop down a, a tree? No, not yet. So it is. It's an even better animation. I've had it happen once where the cat couldn't follow me. Like I did do the bouncing thing super, super high and there was a tree up there I could cut. So Stella's just waiting there and waving. And after like 15 seconds, this giant 
puffball that looks super upset is just floating in the air and like gently lands right next to you and then like just shakes itself and it she's back to normal it's just oh, like wow. that's so good okay i have to ask you played it in co-op tell me about the cat fishing animation so yeah the well there's actually a bunch of different animations for the different things but the oh, cat yeah. fishing animation the cat just sits there on the edge of the boat and the fishing rod mm-hmm. shows up above the cat and when the fish okay. pops up, the cat will jump up and catch the fish in its mouth for it to That's go into really your inventory. Good. <laughs> and That's really good. Now you get the little <laughs> rainbow and stuff that pops up. With mm-hmm. the cooking, the cat can cook. So you just run up to the oven. The cat throws the stuff in there. And when it gets done, it gets these little paw mitts that it gets on its paws <laughs> so it can pull the food out of the oven. Yep. That's um, good. When it, when it goes to water, it will lay on its back and the uh, watering can will show up above it and it will push its front legs up. Yeah, they did real good by the cat. <laughs> this game is it just like the level of care on so many of these animations is just it's so good. The the pickaxe mm-hmm. that you get for mining yeah. is a smaller pickaxe for the cat. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> have you di- have you dived underwater as the cat yet? Yes, I have. Um, yeah. Basically, it just looks really frazzled when you make it go under, and then it pops back up, and it's right back up on top of the Everlight. Like, <laughs> That's it great. Basically, just just rushes out of the water on top of the Everlight. The uh, yeah, because the the dive down, it basically creates an anchor, mm-hmm. and then it attaches itself to the anchor, and it's got like this real like I don't know look on right. its face, and then it just disappears. <laughs> so. I love this game so much. Yeah, it's, it's so game. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we're still on me. Um, okay, so <laughs> I forgot we just you. actually transitioned to oh, you, so that yeah. worked pretty nicely. So, are you guys all done talking about Spirit? Uh, yes, yes, go play okay. Spirit Fair. Yes. Um, the next game that I played was Horizon Zero Dawn. I have finished the game. Congrats. Story's really good. Mm-hmm. The controls not so much. <laughs> yeah, it's there's some stuff near the end of the game where it's like, mm, yeah. Mm. My my biggest issue sometimes is just the camera, um, because I use the bow pretty much like ninety nine percent of the time throughout. This yeah, game. yeah. And the camera is already pretty tight on alloy to begin mm-hmm. with, which is fine normally. But then when you use the bow and you're aiming, it zooms in more. Yeah, so that's right. Whenever you're trying to fight something that's flying or something that's just fast it's hard to keep that in your screen because your screen goes from being a regular screen to this tiny little pip screen that you're trying to use. Yeah. Track everything. So that's what I'm excited about the sequel. It's like, how, how are they now that they've gotten the first one under their belt? Like, how are they going to change all that stuff to be a little bit more modern and like a little bit more friendly? Yeah. Cause Mm -hmm. there, I also ran into the issue several times where when you're in an underground area, um, with the lighting, the only way you can see that there's something there is when you use that second sight that she has. Oh, right. And yeah. you get that outline, but if you don't have that, it's like so dark in some areas of the light shining in certain ways that yeah. you can't see an outline of what you're trying to shoot at. Yep. So yeah. that kind of sucks. But I mean, it's a great looking game. I also did not know while watching the credits that Hideo Kojima had anything to do with this game at all because yeah a he very special um, things at the end yeah he um he consulted on it because they were looking at using that engine for death stranding yeah death stranding. because yeah. uh i actually looked that up for why kojima was on this to begin with and yeah they the a small portion <laughs> of the mgs5 team helped work on this engine engine that's right and apparently it is the engine that is used in death stranding yep that's why they ported uh horizon to pc yeah and Mm -hmm. after i did that got my new game plus and looked in my inventory there's like a bunch of death stranding stuff in there that i didn't realize that i had oh they must have patched that in interesting there's there's stranded shackles there's (laughs) a stranded figure and there's also a stranded necklace and That's if you cool. read the description, at the time it doesn't make sense, but since I've beaten Death Stranding, I know exactly that the figure is supposed to be a BB, the necklace mm. is supposed to be, oh, what do they call that? The dog tag things? Yeah. yeah. And then the shackle is the handcuffs that they have. 
And That's cool. The icon for these, they're not like the normal necklace shackle, you know, figurine that you would get. They're the um Kojima team, that astronaut skull icon. Right. Right. And it's like all of this stuff wouldn't have made sense to you playing this game really. <laughs> right. So that was pretty cool, cool going back into seeing that stuff. But yeah, I really love the story. It was great. Um Lance Reddick is great as usual. Yes, and they left it at an awesome cliffhanger. Yep. So obviously since there's a second game coming out, we everyone <laughs> right. who's beaten it kinda knows where it's going. But it, when I finished it originally I was like, Why? Why would you do this to me? That was so good. <laughs> yeah. So I I still may not buy the next one day one, but mm-hmm. I'm interested in playing it. And I still have the DLC because I bought the one that came with, what was it, the Wild Frozen DLC? Frozen, yeah. Frozen something Wilds like that. or something. Boy, yeah. yeah, if there's any if there's a, any time to get into that, it's right now before you forget the controls because that is hard and it starts yeah. hard immediately. Yeah. <laughs> And the only other thing that I don't like about this game is that it is so filled with icons. Yes. And I know everyone goes back and forth complaining about open world games where either there's too much or there's nothing. Mm -hmm. And this one for me hits too much where you could zoom in all the way on your map and still have 60 icons that you're looking at. And if you zoom out, a lot of those icons take up the map, so you kind of have to zoom in midway so you can try to figure out the pathing for the, that you're supposed to be taking. But yeah, whatever. I'm I'm not generally an open world person, even though I've played two open world games back to back this year. So. <laughs> right. But I mean, I'm also not the guy that gets burnt out on it and every year complains about open world games. It's like I right. pick one. That's up my job. Maybe, yeah, I <laughs> pick one up maybe once every year, every other year. So right. The last one that I could think of was Spider Man that I played mm-hmm. off the top of my head. So, which was also a, a really good game. good game. It is. Yeah. Um, after that, though, I was talking with a coworker at work who recently started getting into Warframe. Oh, no. Yeah. So <laughs> I was comparing basically how the game played since the last time I played it to how it's uh-huh. playing now for them. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of differences. A yeah, of differences. there's like a tutorial now. <laughs> yeah, so I downloaded that and jumped back into it for one mission, and none of it looks familiar. <laughs> yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. I completed a capture mission by myself, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, still running Oberon with a Soma Prime. Still love that gun, even though they nerfed it. The... Uh, as I'm playing this though, and I'm noticing like the different things and the different icons, menus, how the frames feel different, the new move sets that they have and all that, I was trying to figure out when the last time I had played this game was. Oh no. And what I can tell you is that I think I have it narrowed down to the last time that I played this game was when they were on update 16 on the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. They are currently on update 31. <laughs> So it might have been like 2018. Yeah, maybe. So wow. it's been a while. <laughs> Man. But yep. the core stuff is still the same. He and I were discussing um, like the different ways. Because now you have, I think they call it a controller now. Where you're not, you. I guess spoilers for Warframe. Dude, right. so as, hey, as it is. Just give them a couple <laughs> seconds. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> your frames are... Not you in a power armor suit, basically. Mm -hmm. You are a being, a human, that is in a control center, basically, and you are remotely controlling these frames. Okay. So, once you've unlocked that, you actually get to create another character, and that is your controller. Like the human drone operator? And what they've added are these new skill sets for your controller. So oh, no. now what you can do is you have this other energy bar that you can fill up. And once that fills up, you push down on the touchpad and you unlock like this, or you unleash this ultimate attack where your Go controller on. phases out of the frame and just basically unleashes a beam of holy righteousness <laughs> <laughs> that I have so far. Right. And it's basically this constant beam that just goes off until you get hit and then your controller goes away and you're back in control of your frame interesting 
Yeah, so it's pretty awesome. They've yeah. added a lot more flight mechanics. Um, the arc wings, which no one seemed to like at all, people kind of seem to like now. But they have the bigger thing now where your dojo, which is your clan, um, you have ships in them now. And oh, okay. you can take a group of people from your dojo into a ship and you can do ship missions now where people oh. can... And I, I haven't done this yet. This is what this guy at work was telling me that he did with his group. That it basically separates where, like, say you take, like, ten guys with you. Three of them will stay behind to control the ship and do, like, the weapon systems and stuff like that. Everyone else is out in space on an arc wing flying around shooting things. Oh, okay, I've seen video of that. And I was like, this looks d- – this is Warframe? This looks super yeah. cool. And one of the ones that he was telling me about was they were trying to take over, like, this other ship. So they basically had to fly from their <laughs> ship to this other ship, infiltrate it, do what they had to do, and then come back. That's cool. So they've got, like, a whole other map area for doing just that stuff. Oh, man. Which looks really awesome. I don't know if I'll get back into Warframe, but I like a lot of what they did. Yeah. Don't. Don't. I uh, know. <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> Trust me, don't. Just delete it. <laughs> it's it's one of those games that I'll jump back and forth into, like, obviously after a couple of years, and then I'll get, right. like, real heavy into it again for six months, and then I just give it another break, so. Right. <laughs> But it's well, always yeah. it's always fun to play. I really like it. If you've never played it before, it's free to play. I've yep. never felt the need to have to spend money on it, but I have just because I did play it for a really long time. Mm. And a lot of the stuff that you buy is mostly cosmetics. You can buy Prime stuff, which is stupid expensive. But yeah. you can do it if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, the last game that I played is Everspace. Yeah. It's on sale on Steam for nine thirty nine or something like that for everything. Yeah. And I we, said last, uh, I said last we, I, time on this podcast that the next time it goes on sale, I will buy it. <laughs> I think in the public feed, uh, Everspace just wrapped up for We Rogue Like It. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, yeah. That is a game. <laughs> Uh-huh. I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, my first run, I got to the second sector and was immediately blown up. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, this is why I generally don't play roguelikes, but whatever. <laughs> For a first run, that's really good. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't horrible. Um, yeah. the thing it was uh, what is it the Or Orvik? Whatever the alien race or whatever it is that oh they've got the yeah. corvettes and stuff anyway yeah. it was like a mark ii fighter or something that and it was just yep. one and i was like all yep. right i should be able to take this no <laughs> absolutely <laughs> are you, not are you playing on normal yes yeah uh what's your control scheme uh i'm playing on pc so it's whatever i want it to be okay, okay. i don't That's have exactly. to worry about the plight of you plebes <laughs> well, there's there's a sort of a, a funny part in We Rogue Like It and at the end of episode one, I believe it was for Everspace. Monkey Senior's like, man, I tried this different control scheme, control scheme C, and it like it immediately clicked way better. And Moon and I had switched over in the week between episode one and two, and yeah. Yeah. Control scheme C is where it's at, but you're playing I, on PC, so you can just do whatever you want. Yeah, I heard that, so that was the first thing before even playing the game that I looked at, but it doesn't have that control scheme, just because yeah. you can set it up however you want, and I did plug in the controller, and from what you guys were describing, it seems like that's the default on PC with a controller. Oh, so okay, interesting. There's only there's only a couple things that I moved around and tweaked, just so that it would be more, like, I don't know what it is, but like in shooters, I can't play inverted. Anything okay. that anytime I have to fly something, it has to be inverted. Oh so yeah, I don't 100%. know what the disconnect is there, but if, I can't yeah, if I'm make f- it work in my mind. <laughs> if I'm flying anything, it has to be inverted. But like, if I'm controlling a person, it it absolutely cannot be. Yeah, I think Vinny Caravella from the Giant Bomb site he spoke about this a lot, and I, I'm going to steal uh, paraphrase him <clears> a little bit here when I say, if I'm controlling it. From my perspective, then up or is up, down is down. However, mm. if I feel like I'm holding a stick in controlling uh, that game, pulling towards me should lift the nose of the ship. Gotcha. Just... That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. 
because I've I've gone back and forth between playing first person in this and third person. Mm-hmm. Um, first person's really nice, but I went back to third person just because I like being able to see around me, especially in the starter. That was ship. my preference. Your yeah. cockpit window is it's wide, but not wide enough for me. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. So yeah, first run made it to sector seven, or I'm sorry, sector two. My second run made it all the way up to sector five before I died. Nice. Um, Killing using it. the same ship. So I had, I was basically on the last node before I got to the jump gate. I was in an area that had a jumping jammer in it. I'm like, all right. Oh, yeah. so, and I had like all these things that I had to take out. So I took all of them out. And by the time I took all of those out, five of these Corvette things show up right on top of the jumping jammer. Yep. yep. And there, there it is. Nothing I could do <laughs> about that. Right. So I got real close to almost getting out of there, but yeah, they, they lit me up. I, yeah. There was no getting around that. So that ended that one in that run though. I did find, um, what, what are they called? The alien race or the ancient race, whatever. Yeah. I uh-huh. found one of those structures, which gave me an ancient glyph after nice. I uh-huh. fought this orb thing, which then turned into uh-huh. a singularity, which uh-huh. <laughs> almost sucked me in. Um, yep. cause I was like just on the outskirts where my ship was starting to get dragged to it and I was still able to boost out of it and I was fine cause the ship, you know, goes into all warning. It's like, Oh, singularity detected or whatever. I'm like, Oh man, that looks really nice. I wonder what happens if I fly into it. And that's when I remembered moon saying, stay away from singularities. <laughs> right. <Yep. laughs> I'm like, all right. Yeah. So I backed out. And then after you kill that thing, your ship has like this glow, like this orange glow that's just like constantly going around it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. What is this? I still don't have a jump coordinate. I'm not noticing anything else. And that's when I start putting two to two together that, oh, okay, I flew inside this thing that went into an empty chamber. I bet you this is probably going to power that up. So I flew back in there. It powered everything up. I got my glyph. And then I looked up and there's a warp gate right there. Nice. Yep. Which is awesome because I had no fuel to jump. <laughs> <laughs> so then I jumped. Which then prop brought me into the scenario that I mentioned of being blown up by five Corvettes. So right. I was like, all right, yep. that ends that run. My third run, I had 19,000 credits. So after listening to you guys, again, I oh, went straight ship. into... Yeah. All gunship. praise be. <laughs> and my God, is that thing OP. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> the first enemy, I only there was like these two fighters that I had to take out. And I'm like, all right, let's see what this thing does. And I think I fired two shots from its plasma accelerator or whatever. Yeah. And I yeah. think just blew that thing out of the space. It just it's vaporized, like, vaporized. Yeah. It's like, wow. It's like, all right. Holy crap. Let's go. So, <laughs> I'm only, I think I just made it to sector two and then I mm-hmm. saved and quit. But yeah, that thing flies like a brick, but good God, can it take care of some business? Yep. It's so yep. good. I kind of want to take on a Corvette just to see what it does. <laughs> That's right. Go yeah. for it. Because, yeah. Well, Cons- I was say, because the, the last time I tried to take on a Corvette, I was kind of playing cat and mouse with it where I was hiding behind an asteroid. So I would come out just far enough to destroy some of the shield repair things that it had. And then I would take down some of its shields. And as soon as all of its turrets would turn around on me, I would fly to the other side of the asteroid and do the same thing. Oh, it, right. It didn't get anywhere. I think I got it down to like half shields and then it just regenerated everything. I'm like, all right, I'm just getting out of here. So I'm mm-hmm. kind of curious to see what the gunship does because yeah. I think it's it does super your crazy. Shackles, yeah, consider your shackles broken. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Please>. right. <laughs> Unleash the beast. That's right. It, I, I am enjoying the game. I yeah. do want to play it again. I it reminds me a lot of FTL, especially with the mapping yes. stuff. Yep. Uh-huh. So, and I've already run across all these different characters. The yes. when I the first area I was in with the gunship, I was helping a lady out who was being attacked, and yep. she gave me like a bunch of crap. I was like, all right, cool. Uh-huh. And then yep. the next area I jumped into, um, this fuel freighter was stuck in a land or in like a space mine area so i yeah blew like up a literally bunch of it's mines. got two mines next yeah. to it and you're just like come on dude just drive straight you'll get out of this no problem yeah like yeah, not cool. even a problem 
whatever. So I, I helped them out and they jumped out and then my them liking me went up or whatever. Oh, yeah. Until I got into the next area and needed fuel and blew up one of their fuel canisters and that really took them <laughs> off. But I got Ooh. so much fuel. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. That's all I've been playing this week. Uh, I'm going to try and blow through most of mine pretty quickly here because we've been recording for a while. Uh, Fortnite new season is out now and it's a Marvel season. So like a fool, I decided to check it out and whoops, I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. Um, <laughs> let's go through all the characters here that they have for the season, just in the season pass. Cause they just, uh, they started selling silver surfer and it's money and I don't want to spend money. Um, so just the season pass, Thor is basically the first one you get, and it's a really good looking Thor. It's like comics Thor and not movie Thor. Um Wolverine, he's gonna be it looks like he's basically gonna be like the challenge one where it's like do X number of challenges over the next couple of weeks. Uh the best mm-hmm. part is when you unleash his harvesting tool, it's his claws, and it says snicked on the screen, and then you slash its stuff. Oh, okay. It's really good. Uh, okay. S- Storm, uh, one of her alternate uh, costumes is the Mohawk Storm, which is immediately, I- I'm going to get that as soon as I possibly can. Uh, she Hulk, which is really great. Uh, yeah, can we talk about how good She Hulk looks, by the way? She Hulk looks really good. <laughs> like, she has the right number of muscles everywhere. And it, like, it's not just like, yeah, here's She Hulk. Like, she's she's skinny. It's like, no. Here's She-Hulk. She has like 15 muscles on top of other muscles. Like, she's, mm-hmm. she's big. Uh, Groot. Groot looks really great. And Groot's backpack Wait, is... Which variation of Groot? Teen? Baby? Full, full big grown. one. Uh, but okay. his unlockable backpack is baby Groot dancing in a, a pot on his back. Of course. Which is of course. really good. Uh, Doctor Doom, which is sort of surprising and he looks really solid uh iron man of course um and mystique which is not one i was expecting uh and mystique looks pretty cool uh she has like Mm -hmm. the skull and everything like it it i'm really impressed with how high quality a lot of stuff is like every Fortnite skin is really great um but it I, i feel like they went the extra mile for like a whole bunch of Marvel characters. Plus it's not just like the ones from the movies. It's like, no, the X-Men in, are in here too. Like we managed to get them all, uh, even mm. ones that you may not know about. Um, so I think, I think that's super cool. And a lot of the challenges for them seem pretty fair so far. Um, like I just finished Thor's challenges uh, today. So you can use an emote where like lightning strikes his hammer and he sort of glows for a little bit. He probably does something different. I don't know. Um, but, uh, Fortnite is still great. And, uh, this Marvel event seems pretty cool so far. Uh, destiny two, uh, destiny group. We did some trials of Osiris, uh, to, tr- there are a bunch of challenges that require trials wins, uh, that we decided, uh, this Friday to try and see how many we could get. And th- over the course of like two or two and a half hours, we got three wins, uh, which is, Three more than we thought we were gonna get, uh, <laughs> dude. And, I can spend eight hours playing Apex and get zero wins, so you're fine. Well, and the thing with trials too is, um, <clears throat> it's not like some of the other competitive PvP modes in the game. Um, this is basically as soon as you knock down the enemy team, that's it. Uh, they you get one win, get to five wins, and you win the the match. Oh, um, is that the punch card one? That is the punch card okay. one. Yeah, um, and. It, it doesn't have a, a bank of lives like the other competitive mode. It's if you're not getting knocked down, you're down. Someone can try and revive you, but you know, that's, that's the risk you're, you're going to put. Um, we had a couple of matches where we just got a hundred percent stopped where it's like, Oh, cool. 10 seconds in they're behind us somehow. Like, Oh, okay. That's great. The majority of the matches were, pretty close like we got we had we were getting better as we were playing um and uh a lot of our wins were really close and we had one match where we just completely stomped them like i i it's almost one of those ones where you feel bad where it's like you you guys are just not you're not getting it together and i sort of feel badly but i'll take the w because i need i need Mm -hmm. seven of them um 
I also did, I haven't really talked about Moments of Triumph this year. It's basically the celebration of the last year of Destiny. One of them is, um, there are 30 challenges in there. One of them is to complete all five of the first raids and raid layers. You can get access to a, a, a ring, like a physical ring you can buy for $130. So I will not be purchasing yeah. that. Uh, you get a, a special emblem, which looks super dope. Um, so I've been going very slowly, like once every couple of weeks, been going uh, through all of these raids, mostly because I haven't done the first three. Um, I did Leviathan with Bill Sifford, uh, and um, that went really well eventually. There's... <laughs> A very, very funny story about somebody not knowing the difference between rows and columns that maybe someday I will tell uh, <laughs> once I've stopped being salty about it. Um, I did Eater of Worlds, which is easily the fastest Destiny raid I've ever done. <clears throat> it took us a long time to get the raid started, and it still took us 45 minutes. So, like, it is it, it, it very quick. Um, and yesterday I did Spire of Stars, which is infamous. I have found for good reason is easily my least favorite of piece of destiny content in the franchise's history. Um, why I like mechanically complex raids. Like you look at something like King's fall from destiny one, or you look at something like the Riven fight in last wish. There's a lot of moving parts. And I think, Get the ball, run the ball around the hoop. And yeah, slam like it into the goalpost. These three people are doing these things. These, these three people are doing this thing. I like that stuff because like everybody has a job to do, and like everybody's job is important. I also like raids where every team member has a clearly defined role, and the success depends on them executing that role. Like the final boss battle of Crown of Sorrow, where there's not necessarily a ton going on. But everybody, every team of two people has a lot of stuff they need to do. I think that's really interesting. Spire of Stars combines those two. <laughs> so there are like seven different phases in the boss fight where everybody has a very specific thing that they're doing that they then need to switch to something else to come back to do this, to like step off a plate, to come back on. And like... All of it makes sense, and like you make every time you attempt it, you you get a little better, and you get in the flow, and you you learn how to adapt to some of the the challenges it throws at you, and some of the the bugs that you're gonna run into in any video game. Um, but I caused a wipe for the team because there were two people in front of me, and I threw the ball at the wrong person, and in that like three seconds of time we lost because I threw it at the wrong person, we couldn't finish the encounter. That's no fun. Like, th that's so just the... It sounds uh, like the worst of both worlds. It really is. And it's like, each of those types of raids are fine, but you can't combine them like that. The best part about finishing Spire of Stars is I will never have to do it ever again. Like that, and to me, as someone who loves Destiny and loves raiding in Destiny, that's like the worst feeling you could possibly have for like a pinnacle raid piece of content in the game. And now I understand why it's so hated in the community because it's just, <laughs> it's so long and there's just so much to it. It's just, it's just not fun. It, 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 like it, the, ch it, it's so challenging that it moves to being unfun. And that's, that just stinks. That was part of some of the issues I was having with some of those raids anyway, where mm -hmm. you're trying to get a group together and everyone's like, if you haven't done this and you don't know, you know, what yeah. role you, you haven't had fulfill, 50 clears already. Yeah, yeah. We're not taking you. And it's like, but I need to do this so that I can know how to do this. Right. And, and that's where, that's why I've been, tr that's why it takes me so long in between each raid is I keep a really close eye on the destiny Sherpa subreddit. Um, and uh, every couple of weeks the time will will work out right where like someone that seems like a nice sherpa is running the right raid where i have a two or three hour window for me to learn it and this one i got really lucky because this guy was sherpaing it but 
<laughs> what he wasn't saying is myself and four of my clanmates that know this thing inside and out are going to Sherpa you. So like, even if some stuff falls down a little bit, we've done this 50 times before. So we know how to recover. We know how to kind of, uh, not cheesy encounters, but like do them in a most optimal way while we're teaching you. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. that, that was a really great, I've run into so many great Sherpas in the community that aren't like that. So they can like get your first, get your first run under you. So you can go run with some of those super elitist, annoying groups if you really want to, which I don't. Cause I don't like running with people that are like, we wiped once I'm leaving. It's like, I, okay, great. Welcome to the internet. Or yeah, you yeah. get like I remember some raids where it's like, oh, if the boss's health isn't by down by this much, you just get people dropping. Yeah, it's like, it's oh, like, you guys didn't do enough damage. I'm leaving. Yeah, and it's like, but we <laughs> haven't lost yet. This isn't the point right. of no return. This boss doesn't have an enraged timer. We're fine. Just do yeah. another phase. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. I started uh, after I finished uh, Spirit Fair, I decided to start Dark Siders Genesis. This game's weird. I, I I was expecting essentially Darksiders Diablo. Uh-huh. It's not really that. It it's kind of an isometric Darksiders dual stick shooter mm-hmm. a- adventure okay. game thing. But and then you can switch between Strife, who has the a gun, and War, who's just the Darksiders one guy. Um, Wait, how dare you just refer to War as the Darksiders? Just the Darksiders one guy? I mean... Just remove that just. Hey, I like Darksiders 2 a little bit more, but Darksiders 1 is still dope. Um, yes. The best Zelda game we've gotten in a really long time. <laughs> hey, Breath uh, of the Wild's pretty good. Yeah... The best additional Zelda we game we've had. Yeah, before. Breath of the Wild is is a really good open world adventure game. Um, but see what Breath of the Wild two does. Um, I I I spent probably about an hour and a half with this game. I finished like the first level. I fought a boss. Like I've got a whole bunch of story stuff, and I kind of don't know how I feel yet. Like it's well made and it controls well and it seems fine, but like I kind of don't understand what it's going for yet and that's it's what i'm playing it and i was just sort of like i don't what what are we trying to do here like I, not a bad a way prequel, isn't it it's a prequel before dark side is one i think i i'm sort of getting that impression but it, it hasn't i don't think it's come out right and said it but i'm not like the super dark dark siders lore master so i'm not I'm not entirely, I'm not sure, like, oh, they mentioned the council, so that definitely means, I have no idea. This isn't Destiny, so, like, I, I, I don't really know. Um, so I'll, prob- I'll probably keep sticking with this, but, like, I feel like if I was playing it in co-op, I'd probably be having a lot more fun, because it'd be two people that were really confused the whole time. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just me, and it's kind of fa- fine, good, maybe, but I, I don't... I don't know. I have no idea. As, as Moon says, I don't know. <laughs> yep. Uh, and last game I played here is I put a bunch more time in Paper Mario Origami King. Now that I've sort of come down from uh, Return of the Ober Din, I can play something else on my Switch now. Oh. Um, and I've finished the first. So the whole thing in the game is like the bad guys have encased the Princess Peach's castle in these giant streamers and the streamers are sort of they're like paper mache streamers they have spread themselves out across the the whole of mushroom kingdom so you're for, you chase the red one down first um i've completed that whole thing like i've broken the first streamer um which meant that i fought two boss battles the first one was pretty good the second wait, one wait was, wait wait hold yeah. on you said you broke the first streamer who are you mixer <laughs> Hey yo. Uh no, I'm just just Mario. Just mute Mario like in all the other Paper Mario. Well, Nintendo does that too, but yes. Yeah. Um The first ba- boss battle was fine. The second one was really great because you're fighting against a a sentient box of colored pencils, <laughs> which is 
really, really great uh, because they've been attacking this tower because uh, everything's made out of paper. So they're like po- punching holes in this tower and the rockets are just uh, color pencils that are coming in. It's it's really good. Um, but the boss battles are really interesting because the normal battles are just concentric rings. You're lining enemies up so you can kind of get them in a row or a square and do damage. The boss battles are the opposite. So the boss is in the middle and the circles, you start on the outside and the circles have like arrows and buffs and damage uh, tiles on them. So you have to make, using the arrows, you have to basically bounce. It's like choo-choo rocket where like if he hits the left arrow, he's going to go left along this. If he hits an up arrow, he's going to go up towards the boss. So you're drawing this path to try and get as strong as you can to like activate a skill to then hit a skill token right next to the boss so you can eventually do that skill to do boss damage. Um, and it's it's a really cool way of, of flipping that whole mechanic uh, completely. And it... it by that point, I, I was kind of getting sick of the the normal battles because it's make a line, make a square. Like it's it's kind of an impediment more than anything else. So mm-hmm. having a boss battle do something really cool, and then once you complete that, your the party member you're with is sort of like, hey, by doing that you got stronger. So just like any Goombas out in the world, if you hit them before they walk into you, you just win the battle and you just get a bunch of coins. It's like, perfect. Thank you. Like I, at, right at the point where I'm sort of like, Oh man, I could do a, a lot less of these random encounters. The game is just like, yeah, we're done with that. Let's move on. Um, so, so far still really great. I, I'm having a blast with it. Again, if someone is coming into this expecting an RPG, it is not. Uh, it is, is sadly not a Paper Mario RPG, uh, but it's more like a, a an encounter puzzle game than the previous ones have been. And I, I know people are upset about that, and I don't blame you, um, but like, I, I'm going into this knowing that it's not an RPG, which is fine. It's, yeah. it's the same fans who complained about this not being the same as the previous ones, mm-hmm. but didn't complain about Breath of the Wild being the same as the previous ones. Right, <laughs> right, right. You can't, you can't make anyone happy. I was gonna say you can't make everyone happy, but no, you can't make anyone happy. Everyone's always upset. Everyone just wants to fight for no reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that uh, quite a bit. I'm hoping to probably tonight start on the the second streamer. I think there's five of them uh, total. Uh, but that's all I've been playing this, this week. Ninja. Go ahead. Is this one ninja? No, I actually don't know. I don't know when the ninja one is, but I've. I know that is one. I know the reference, um, but I've been specifically not spoiling myself on this stuff because I've heard that Ninja Village is really good. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. There's like a trivial play on words going on right now. Let's just go to break. All right. Let's, I, I don't know what joke you're trying to make, but... I do. Oh, and I, I get it. And I both of you. <laughs> Sorry, you're talking about Garbage Human Ninja, the streamer. Uh, who, who hates women? Uh, yeah, no, I'm talking about there's a there's a there's a ninja related theme park in Japan that they parody in. Uh-huh. This. I know. Yeah, I'm I'm not talking about <laughs> trash pile human ninja. Yeah, no, talking about talking about something fun and something that uh, enjoys being around women and not hating them. Uh, so that's all the games I've been playing this week. So let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of August 31st, 2020. Crusader Kings 3 comes out on PC, OS 10, and Linux. Uh, you've probably seen the high-def Capybara. Uh, that's literally all I've seen of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everyone seems super pumped about this. So, uh, Marvel's Avengers comes out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia. Um, 
they've <laughs> been talking Sorry, a little stadia uh, yeah yeah just so funny uh i know the ps5 and series x versions are coming later this year but i don't think they have a release date yet um so i don't know you know like how smart delivery is going to work how any of that is going to work so don't quote me because i don't know uh nba 2k21 pc switch ps4 xbox one and stadia and rounding out the releases this week tony hawk's pro skater one and two pc ps4 and xbox one that game looks great and uh they have recently just said that they got the rest of the songs back in the game and just added a whole bunch of new ones so Mm -hmm. two thumbs up uh all right let's talk about our final Fortnite update because i'm kind of done talking about it now that it seems like largely the the dust has settled um no 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 it's in the court's hands now that's what the issue is well yeah sort of so a federal judge this week ordered apple to not disable the unreal engine related epic accounts so basically they're saying like look i'm not going to rule on the other stuff right now but you you can't kill Unreal Engine on a platform that that feels punitive. You, you really can't do that. That that would be a step too far. Um, the judge did say we'll rule on the other stuff later. Apple did, however, disable Epic Games account, essentially the the Fortnite account, the one that uh, publishes Fortnite on iOS, and just sort of said like, "Hey, we got to the date, and you didn't take this stuff out, so." bye (laughs) see ya Mm -hmm. um so they're like we weren't we weren't joking that this adios um and this is probably unless epic gets really weird about something out of left field again uh we probably won't talk about this until the probably sealed case uh you know deliberation for that comes out of federal courts that we'll never know the terms of so what a weird end (laughs) <laughs> don't worry in 30 years we'll get a book a tell old book yeah that's true if my eyes still work at that point either I'll... yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> if my eyes still work at that point i'll read it on my space reader or something uh gamescom started this week or what gamescom is this year started this week uh jeff Keeley, as he usually does ushered it in uh in front of an unreal engine 4 stage uh they he showed a lot of stuff over the two hours plus a super annoying pre-show. Um, uh-huh. Don't don't do that pre-show again. Um, so the nice thing is that they got out front pretty early on and said like, "Look, we're not. There's not a lot of world exclusives this time. It's a lot of like updates on stuff we already know about." So like, it, there was an attempt to say, "Lay thy pitchforks down, internet." Um, and it probably didn't work, but it was nice to see them come out front and say it. Um, let's talk about the highlights here as they are. Uh, Doom Eternal, the Ancient Gods Part 1 got a gameplay trailer. Uh, that looks like more of it with like more enemies and maybe a couple new weapons. This would be a standalone expansion. Um, so if you didn't play Doom Eternal, you can kind of get into whatever this is going to be. Uh, Bioware came out to talk about Dragon Age and pulled another no, no, no. pulled another they EA. Which look at all this concept slow pans of concept art. They did see you E3 later. E three of twenty eighteen is hundred percent. E and E three of twenty sixteen and fourteen and <laughs> like it's in every yeah. other year EA where they're like the future of Dragon Age is important to us. Here's a volcano someone drew. Moving on. It's just like mm-hmm. just. Just don't. Just, we know you're working on it. We know, we have to assume you've been rebooting it here. Just, just say like, we're still working on it. Uh, Dragon Age is very important to us. See you next year. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. See you in 2023. Um, there's a new Star Wars expansion for The Sims 4 that looks really good. Uh, this yeah. was not the tie-in I was expecting, but it no, looks my really wife good. Is losing her mind over it. More it so looks my re- kids, but yeah, it looks really good because they were like, "Here's a here's a, a tie-in you never saw coming," and I was like, "Oh, it's The Sims. Oh, it's Star. Oh, it's The Sims Star Wars. Yeah, cool." Um, also showed another trailer for Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga, which got a delay to spring 2021. That still looks good. 
that that game it's all nine movies all smashed into one 60 ish and could play it for the 17th time though yeah like i'm really curious to see when the reviews come out of like are, did they just like remake these levels and put a different hub in them like are we playing the same thing or did you kind of remix and create new stuff um that uh, otherwise it looks like it still has sort of the same lego game humor in it which is great and if it is the same thing for the same time maybe i'll just pick it up for 10 bucks including season pass in like three years <laughs> yep they would just do the extended lore already i know it's not canon anymore yeah it's so not gonna stop, stop just them. doing the movies but just do now it's called else. legends though and it's called legends which makes it an even better video game title that's true lego yeah. star wars legends volume one <laughs> <laughs> this horse is driving an x wing uh they showed fall guys season two you know in time for 40 days left in fall guys season one uh they're showing a medieval theme which looks really good and a whole bunch of new mini games which also look really good um i play fall guys at least like two or three matches of fall guys every day so i'm still super interested in uh fall guys and my kid still really loves fall guys yeah. Uh, I'm now a Slurpee and she's always saying like, yeah, go milkshake, go. It's like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I never win, <laughs> but I appreciate, know. appreciate having a cheerleader. Uh, um, go you ahead. should check out girlfriend reviews. Just did a parody song video for fall guys. It's Oh, solid. I should watch that. I like girlfriend reviews. Uh, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond was shown off there. They really spent a bunch of time touting that this is a brand new game from like the original creators of Medal of Honor, except for like Steven Spielberg. Um, so like they were spending a ton of time really building this up. And it's a VR only, Oculus only game, which is just like the air came out of the room at that point. Because this game looks pretty okay. And then mm -hmm. they're like, this is the only control scheme for Medal of Honor. And so like, hmm. Mm, that's a letdown. Have you got that, that nail ready? Yeah. yeah. Have you got that nail from the box labeled "Death"? Because we need one to hammer it into this game real <laughs> right. quick. And like, I get where they were coming from because they're like, look, if if you want to duck, you just duck. If you want to like lean around a corner a little bit, you just lean over instead of having to hold two or three buttons. It's like, yeah, I get it, man. But like, use the gyroscope in these controllers. Like, you can do that too. Like, this is yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a bummer. Uh, they showed off a bunch of new gameplay of Destiny 2 Beyond Light with the new stasis element slash subclass. So they got all the, the freezy bits and all the ice wands and stuff. It looks great. It looks really good. It looks, there's still like 73 days left in this season. It's oh. so long. Uh, so long. Um, and last off, they showed um, an incredibly long gameplay, pure gameplay demo of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, seven and a half minutes. Um, so basically they took the last gameplay demo and just showed all of it. Um, and man, Sony and Microsoft, I think, up until this point, have been doing a really great job of selling the benefits of having an SSD from day one in these consoles. And you know, Microsoft showing like super fast game switching. We're like, yeah, we're running five games at the same time. You're switching to them in 15 seconds. And here's the load times for State of Decay 2, which is abysmal on current gen. And, and next gen, it's like 10 seconds. No big deal. But seeing this longer gameplay demo of Ratchet and Clank, just like here you're in the Metropolis area and like, literally two seconds later here's an entirely different world for two seconds and then you're in this other one and like jumping between this is one of those moments where i'm like okay like now i understand showing us raw gameplay from something like this it's like this is what you can do with the the next hard and of course it looks great and it sounds great like the ratchet games have always looked great and it'll look great in yeah. 4k but like Seeing those load times, it's just like, yeah, man, like this looks really good. Like you, that's really impressive. So I'm just um, super happy that there's another Ratchet and Clank game. Hundred percent. Yeah. And like they had a, they had a, um, what was that pirate themed one from the, the PS3? Something of booty. Quest, like, quest for booty. Quest for booty. Yeah. yeah. Also, still a great title. Uh, like they made a reference. Anything, Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause they, they made a reference to that where you like one of the portals takes you to the quest for booty 
world and like someone's makes a reference to that and then you teleport out it's like yeah that's really good this game's gonna be this is one of those few day one purchases for me like a ratchet and clank a a regular ratchet and clank game that isn't like a four-player thing or like an experimental thing has never let me down um so i'm really looking forward to rift apart uh, all right, let's move on to questions here. Carried over a couple bit, a couple from last week. Uh, T-Bomb Rock says, over the years, you've uh, answered varied questions or ir- about irritations or cardinal gaming sins. What about apps? Some of your app cardinal sins. Dark mode, lack thereof. Yeah, I like dark mode a lot. Uh, like, And if you can have your dark mode change from like light mode to dark mode based on when my phone does it because i run light mode during the day and dark mode at night that that's even that's the uh, that's the chef's kiss right there uh Uh for me it's how i guess abrasive the adding is right um because like so recently uh probably actually a couple months ago the music player for samsung on the android s7s all of a sudden that started having ads, which I'm fine with, but now it pops up with a screen every time that I click on it where it's an ad. And it's like, you can uh. click on this button where it's like, don't show me an ad for another seven days. I'm like, nope. So I completely moved all my music to a different app. Right. And deleted that off of my phone. So <laughs> Also, like, why are you putting ads in like the built-in music player like it it would be one thing if it's like here's a like a tiny little image at the top but it's sort of like yeah because it never had ads before and now that's frustrating i have to close out this window just to get to what i have for music and now it's popping up like youtube ads saying like you're not you're not a dish you're a man yeah yeah whatever i'll deal with ads if i'm using the free one and that's the other thing too if i have to pay for an app there better not be any ads in it Right. Or like the if if the only thing I pay for is like removing ads for a dollar, like that's that's cool. Yeah. Um Moon, anything that uh rustles your jimmies about apps? I mean losing sp- losing places is a is a very big one as well, to be honest. Like mm. dark mode, losing places. Not remembering formats, which is something Windows is actually pretty nasty about as well. Thanks it can Windows be, every yeah. Time you update. Um, but if I set my Twitter to be go away with your top tweets, BS, give me right. latest tweets, don't change it back two days later right. and let me know. You're now seeing top tweets first. It's like, no, I changed that. I don't I want save to. save that change. Right. I don't change it back without my permission. And also right. stop serving me ads for cat food because you keep hearing me talk about cat food right we're not changing the humans food spoke right about cats <laughs> yeah we need to keep our cats on the same food because we have things to uh, allergies to process right so go away with your just, cat food ads. just like my cats it's like they have this specific food for medical reasons i'm not and i literally can't buy it from anywhere except for my vet don't show me any of this stuff Mm-hmm. The uh, other thing that I also hate too is like with Twitter on mobile, it started asking me to start confirming my contact information. Yeah, it's like, why do you need that? Nope. So I deleted that and I just use Twitter on PC because it doesn't ask me for my contact information. <laughs> my favorite mm-hmm. ones is like, hey, you just started using this app. Do you want to invite people in your contacts list? It's like, no, we I don't know. even have anyone in my contacts list because yeah. nobody calls me. I text you two and my wife and my mom, and that's about it. Oh. <laughs> I've got one more, too, and this just seems to be game specific for mobile. When you start a game brand new, just downloaded it and you get into it and it forces you into a tutorial and you can't do anything with the settings until you get through the tutorial oh. and it lets you into the main menu so you and you got the music, music like, blaring <laughs> yeah and it's yeah. like or yeah it's just dumb stuff like that it's like let me look at the settings first and right. then when i click new game or whatever then throw me into your hour-long stupid tutorial that i'm not gonna read anyways so. 100 percent. yeah yeah. Um, T bomb here says mine would be searching through a long list and clicking on a page, then backing out, and the the list starts all the way at the beginning. Yeah, yep. that's <laughs> one of those. There's like, 
oh yeah, all right, I found it on the 50th thing, and now I want to keep looking through the list. Nope. Thanks. Uh, Tim at Hoke sends our last question here uh, of the week. Uh Hi, guys. I finally found a new Switch without paying over retail. Thanks, Best Buy. Question is, what games other than Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild are required Switch gaming? And he has another question here for us in a minute. Pokemon, if you're a fan of that series, or JRPGs in general. Yep. I like uh, I like Pokemon. Spiritfarer is on Switch. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. East. <laughs> East is on the Switch. Yep. Um, I'm trying to look through here. Uh, on Nintendo's web. It's really hard for me. I don't have my Switch here right now. Go play the Return of the Oberdin. Um, I don't have my Switch here right now, so it's like a little bit hard to figure out what I have purchased and I enjoy. I was actually looking at on my shelf. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles. Yep. If you like a really long RPG with massive worlds, yes. you can play the first one or the second one. It's really good. I actually have um, to the first one. Binding of Isaac and Enter the Gungeon are both really good on Switch. They both run really well. Um, there's a lot of Picross games on Switch that are all really good. Um, Astro Chain. Astro Chain, yes. Really awesome game. That's probably on sale, too. Um, 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 God, what else is here? Ultimate Al- Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is pretty good, too. It- yeah. It has random oh, yeah. difficulty spikes in it that is a real pain for my family and I to play with, but... Right. Uh, untitled the, um... Goose Game. Yeah, there is um, do, 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 do the exclusives like Bayonetta and... Um, Bayonetta 2 slash 3, yeah. whatever that's eventually going to get made. Um, I forgot about 3, uh, yeah. And Deadly Premonition. <laughs> oh Cadence yeah, that's Hyrule, right. High Roll, which I still haven't played yet. Yeah, Kings of High Roll. The first really uh, Ori in the Blind Forest is on there. Um, if you haven't played that, apparently that runs really nicely on there. Splatoon Two is really fun to play. Yeah, that's true. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, oh yeah, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. That remake is actually really good. Yep. Um, if you have the online stuff, go play Tetris 99. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, well, I feel like there's just like a bajillion games on here now where I can Look just kind of awesome like... this steel book is for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Just... Oh, snap. Ah, it's wonderful. Captain Toad Treasure I Tracker. I love Who that game. <laughs> uh, Animal Crossing. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's still going to be 60 bucks, but that's really good. Um, I don't, God, there's just like, I feel like my biggest recommendation for the Switch eShop is when you have like an hour just on the console, or I, you might be able to do this on the website, um, just go into like the new releases and go through the sales and go through the indie games filter. They have a whole bunch of filters. Go through and just add everything you find interesting to your wish list. And Nintendo will send you an email when the price drops. You can also go to our, our, our the website we love, psprices.com, uh, which we are not mm-hmm. affiliated with, but the site is really good. Um, you can do it there. But like, that's a lot of times what I do where I'm like, oh, this game just came out. It looks super cool. But I'm not sure I want to spend like thirty dollars on it because I'm playing like five other things right now. Hit the little heart, add it to the wish list, and then just kind of yeah. save that for a rainy day. But yeah, East Origins is on there on the eShop. East Eight you can pick up probably be cheaper on the eShop, and mm-hmm. East Nine next year is coming out on the Switch as well. So there you go. Jump into one of those three. Uh, his other question is also I'm planning on playing uh, only playing docked is a pro controller a must or can I get by with an 8 bit dough Bluetooth adapter and use Xbox controller I mean either the, you feel comfortable with yeah the pro controller is really nice but uh, I know it's like $70 60 if you can find it on sale and it it might be hard to find right now um, and an oh. Xbox controller with that adapter is going to work just fine Go for yep. the God. Well, um, they're not knockoff, but like the third. Oh, party. the hoary ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. for those. Those are really good. Um, yeah, I think like the a, only I, thing you, you might lose is vibration, but I, that probably yeah. won't matter that much. But I mean, like my kids haven't had 
any issues with those controllers and they drop them constantly on the hardwood yeah. floor. So. Right. <laughs> I heard you drop a controller. Come on. It's that's exactly what happens. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I, I think you'd be Hori or the Bluetooth adapter or a pro controller. I feel like you kind of can't go wrong with either one. It just if you're comfortable with the Xbox controller, I've heard those Bluetooth adapters work really well uh, on the Switch. We know Moons works really well on the PS4, um, but mm-hmm. uh, you kind of you kind of can't go wrong there. And Hori's just a really good cheap alternate, well, cheaper alternative compared to yeah, it's like the seventy dollars or eighty dollars for a Pro controller. Yeah, like the price is really good, and you get a really great product. It's one of those things where it's like this is cheaper than it should. Is this like a Mad Cat steal? Like, what are we? And it's like no, it's just like just a really good controller for a lot less money. Yeah, weird when you don't have to license a gyroscope and uh, vibration, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, all right. Well, that's all of our questions for this week. Thank you, everyone, for sending them in. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Everywhere to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page, including the merch store, which uh, you should uh, go check out and keep an eye on our Twitter account going forward. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones are numbers. Talked about it at the top of the show. Uh, you can get early access to We Rogue Like It. Uh, you get two week early access to that. You get two month early access to Critical Misses, which is just, uh, it keeps on rolling. We just uh, have another episode in the can that needs to be uh, video and audio edited uh, this week. Uh, so that's uh, rolling on. I was wondering what was so hot. My son is just baking this chair that i'm sitting in which is no fun um <laughs> you can get the exclusive uncensored out uh, outcast we have uh, the stuff we record before we go live and then it has like all the the breaks and stuff uh and uh you can help me pay for the show and remember the 250 fifty dollar mark i start playing start playing scary games in the dark with these headphones on which are yeah shockingly good. These are Astro headphones, so you know they're not like some Beats garbage or whatever. Um, yeah, so yeah, just scare the poops out of me. Uh, but uh, don't forget, uh, we just did um, the end of Everspace for the public feed for We Really Like It. We're playing the Sexy Brutal for a Game Club right now. Uh, probably, we're doing like 400 shows all at once so like just check the website put the rss feed in your podcatcher uh rate us five stars if you feel free to say anything less than that maybe don't um we appreciate any uh any and go tell a friend go tell two friends yeah. have them tell, tell friends. three friends have them tell four friends no 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 tell two tell pay, two pay it forward it's an exponential curve if you do tell two tell two by the time you get to 20 people, dude, then one person's going to be walking around the street with a megaphone talking about our show, which we don't want to do right now. That's r- Well, the, the exposure would be great, but if you could do it like out your window with a mask on, that would be great. Stay safe. Wash uh-huh. your hands. Uh, that's everything for, for this week. We'll see you all next time. Bye. 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 I only have one title. Nymph, how many do you have? I got a couple. Okay. <laughs> All right. I have Lapex, question mark. That, that's the one I've got. <laughs> In case my, cell, my shelf, <laughs> it's money and I don't money. <laughs> um, remove that just. That's a pretty good one, but I feel like it might be too non sequitur. <laughs> As Moon says, I don't know. <laughs> and go milkshake, go. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, all right, Moon, what do you have? Uh, top 20 every time. Like a Vulcan. <laughs> ABAB, which I realize is probably a veto straight off. It's really good, but it, it's almost like someone talking about the Mortal Kombat 2 blood code. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I bleed blue. Um, a cold, dead robot. The worst of both worlds. Freezy bits and ice ones. <laughs> and go milkshake go. I think go milkshake go takes this dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, because I feel like La Apex is La Apex is a good title, especially with the question mark. But I f- I feel like it's not. It's not as punchy as Go Go Milkshake Go. Mm-hmm. 
I, to me, as soon as you said it, it was like, well, there's the show title. <laughs> Circle it right now. <laughs> All right, well, I'm circling it. Let me know All when right. you guys are ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 671 for August 31st, 2020. Go, milkshake, go. It's a slushy-like drink. Go, milkshake, go, milkshake, go. Go, milkshake, go, milkshake, go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening and all that fun jazz. We appreciate it, and I hope we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 And we can stop recording.